Kane from Discovery Ridge is a fourth grader that will start us off. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So join me in reciting our mission statement, learning today, leading tomorrow. Up next, we have recognition. Good evening. This month, we're celebrating our dedicated school board members. Communities across the state are honor honoring the dedicated service of their local boards of education this month. Our board members devote countless hours making critical decisions for the schools in our community. We, rec we recognize the important contributions of these men and women and the vital role that they play. We are pleased to, to take this opportunity to thank each of you for your time and commitment to public service. On behalf of all of the students, staff, and stakeholders in the Winsville School District, thank you. At your seat, you'll find a small token of our appreciation from the Winsville School District. Up next, uh, the Timberland High School Varsity Cheer Squad, please come to the stage. Um, they <laughs> the squad won the state championship, capturing first place in the large co-ed division at the Missouri Cheerleading Coaches Association State Championship. The Wolves Cheer Squad also competed at the UCA High School National Championship this February. Congratulations. thing you've done in the past month so we are very very proud of you congratulations is there anything you want to say to anyone either in the auditorium or via the internet I like to thank my team and all of my coaches and that's it congratulations guys Very proud of you, congratulations. All right, um, up next, two Winsville School District wrestlers, Cassidy Benwell and Kate Cooper, took home individual state titles during the Misha Girls Wrestling Championship. North Point High School sophomore Cassidy Benwell made school history when she was crowned state champion in her weight class. Benwell became the North Point High School's first ever state champion in any sport. And Timberland High School junior Kate Cooper was crowned state champion in her weight class. Um, Cooper's state championship concludes her se second season in wrestling at 30 and 3 with 22 falls and two technical falls.
Those champions, congratulations. Lots of hard work. Anything you want to say to anyone? I just want to thank you so, so much. I'm showing you all my pictures. I'm showing you my food, my drink. Yeah, me too. Just my family so much. Just everyone loves me. Very proud of you. Congratulations. The Liberty High School Varsity Dance Team, come on up. <laughs> Liberty High School Varsity Dance captured first place in Division Five at the Missouri Dance Team Association State Competition. This is the fourth state championship title for the Liberty Bells. In addition to the division championship, the Liberty Bells placed first in both precision, precision jazz and POM. Congratulations on this incredible accomplishment. Congratulations, ladies. Anyone want to say anything to anyone? Then ladies. Bobby Cole, there we go. Uh, thank you to our parents and families for being so supportive. Thank you to our amazing coach. We could not have done it without her. And thank you to Team 11. That's my best friends. We are just so hard together, and I'm very proud of us. We're all proud of you. Congratulations. Congratulations, ladies. Up next, Megan Adelot was named the Mo Shape 2021 Administrator of the Year. The Administrator of the Year Award is presented to the administrator who provides outstanding support to Mo Shape's programs and makes outstanding contributions to the profession. Adelot is only only the third Missouri school administrator to receive this honor from the society. Congratulations, Megan. And here to say a few words about Megan is Dr. Tom Lowry, MoShape Executive Director. Thank you, Megan, we're proud of you. Uh, members of the Board of Education, Dr. Kane. This is, I think, the third or fourth time I've been out here in the last few years to honor the teachers and the leader of the health and physical educators. The 900 member Missouri Society for Health and Physical Educators for the third year now has selected an administrator of the year. It was a slam dunk. The, the quality of the testimonials provided by the teachers in the Wentzville School District were phenomenal. One of the teachers is watching this at home virtually. Jen Werner, who last year we weren't able to honor because of COVID, became the National Teacher of the Year for Middle School Physical Education. Thanks very much to Megan for bringing this group together, inspiring them, and helping them to be the best that they can be. So thank you. Thank you, Board of Education, Dr. Kane. Daniil Eichmeyer, Building Instructional Assistant at Heritage Intermediate Elementary, noticed a student choking recently. She stepped in to deliver the Heimlich Maneuver and quickly saved the student's life. 
This is not the first time she has shown compassion and courage. In 2014, she saved a student, now a WSD senior, from choking in the cafeteria as well. Our WSD staff and families are very grateful for her heroic ability to think quickly on her feet. Thank you. Neil, congratulations and thank you so very much. We were trying to run the odds, like what are the odds that twice you have literally saved someone's life? Whatever they are, it doesn't really matter because we're so very impressed and so very thankful for your, your quick uh, and steady thinking so and dedication to student life. So thank you so very much. I recognize you very much, Neil. Can you turn this on? No one wants the microphone. There you are. All right, and to conclude our recognitions for this evening, last but certainly not least, Dr. Curtis Kane, WSD Superintendent, was selected as the 2022 ASA National Superintendent of the Year. Although Missouri has been, oh yeah. just say um, it has been a pleasure, a truly a, a professional pleasure to serve as superintendent in the school district. Um, I'm looking at my kids and one being a fifth grader when uh, she started in this district and she's here on spring break for college and, and our son that was, uh, I've literally been on sidelines with uh, a diaper bag because that's how young he was when we, uh, when we got here. But um, it's not about the recognition of any one individual, it's about the collective effort and what we've been able to do as a district and what this district and community will continue to do uh, moving forward. This is a very proud place and I think it has a very bright future um, in front of it. And I'll just say this, I dedicate this to my, uh, my father and my role model, my dad. Thank you. Before I let you sit down, I have a few more things to add. Um, Dr. Kane was the first Missouri superintendent to be named National Superintendent of the Year. The applicants were measured against the following criteria, leadership for learning, communication, professionalism, and community involvement. We are beyond grateful for your leadership here at Wentzville, and congratulations. All right, up next is the public forum. Each resident of the district requests the time to speak during public forum or register her address and state the issue to be discussed with the recording secretary prior to the meeting being called to order. The board president will call the speakers to the floor. Each speaker shall give his or her name and address upon recognition by the president. Speakers will be allowed three minutes for their presentations unless extended by the board president. If more time is required for presentation, the citizens should consider district policy for placement on the regular schedule agenda. Due to the possible number of speakers during public forum, the board president may limit or extend the speaking time. If a number of speakers wish to speak on the same topic, the group shall select a spokesperson to, represent that, to present that information. A speaker may address the board only once during public forum. Speakers may offer such objective concerns of the school operations as they deem appropriate. The board will not hear personal complaints of school personnel nor against any person connected with the district in public session. Matters involving personnel shall be discussed by the board in executive session. An employee of the Winsville School District may address the board by following the public forum guidelines regardless of whether the employee is a resident of the district. 
Up first tonight, we have Lindy Williford. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Lindy Williford. In 2020, Wentzel had the highest tax rate out of all five of the school districts in St. Charles County. In 2021, we ranked second, just behind Orchard Farm. This district received nearly 75% of everyone's real estate taxes last year. And according to Desi, it cost $11,626 per year to educate a child in the Winsville School District. Our outgoing superintendent makes close to a quarter of a million dollars per year. And as we just heard, he won the award for National Superintendent of the Year. But 55% of Winsville students are not proficient in math. 47.5% of Wentzville students are not proficient in ELA. 53% of Wentzville students are not proficient in science. This data comes straight from Desi, and I'll send each of you a copy. While our National Superintendent of the Year has enjoyed a steady salary increase year after year, proficiency rates have decreased year after year. We now have over half of our students not proficient in the core subjects in this district. And I ask you, is that accountability? Is that transparency? In what other industry would this be acceptable? Yet here we are doing this with our children and our tax dollars while celebrating it. This is why parents are fed up and demanding change. There are a lot of good private schools in this county that cost less than $11,626 a year, and they would at least make sure our kids could read and do math on grade level. It should also be noted that our administrators have consistently made nearly double what we pay our teachers. Yet we recently froze teacher pay and gave our administrators a raise. Is it really a wonder we have the worst teacher retention rate when compared to similar sized districts like Francis Howell and Fort Zumwalt? Also, when you compare us to those districts, Winsville students scored about 10% less proficient in the core subjects than students in those districts. We pay the most taxes yet we have the lowest proficiency scores. Why is that? These proficiency scores cannot be blamed on COVID in 2018 and 2019. Winsville had 46.6% of students not proficient in math, 40.5% not proficient in ELA, and 43% not proficient in science. We were less proficient than Francis Howell and Fort Zumwalt pre-COVID as well. That's straight from Desi. I urge the board to please hire a superintendent that has a proven track record that shows academic success and to revisit the hiring criteria you used the last time that clearly did not work. I urge parents on April 5th to please select board members who make academics a priority, not COVID, not reading banned books, and not social justice programs. We must get back to learning and academics. Thank you. Up next is Vanessa Hagedorn. Good evening, members of the board and the community. My name is Vanessa Hagedorn. I would like to know why the Winsville School District has interfered in the upcoming school board election. And why did they continually refuse to follow their own policies regarding the book, The Bluest Eye, the book that contains obscene materials for our children? Winsville School District's challenge materials policy, policy number 6241, states the superintendent shall within 15 days of receiving a written book challenge request appoint a review committee of nine people. The district did not follow this policy. In fact, three months after the book challenge was submitted, the committee was formed. That's certainly not 15 days. No, the committee was not formed until just before the school board election season. And then a candidate who just so happens to be running for the school board was selected to sit on the committee. This particular candidate publicly announced he was running for school board on November 18th, 2021. And what do you know? 15 days later, his name was given as a suggestion for this committee by our board president. Coincidence? I think not. The Winsville School District has interfered in this election 
as his being part of this committee has since been used to benefit his campaign. This does not sound ethical to me. You may be wondering how this information was obtained. A Sunshine Law request is a request for a specific public record from a public body of government. It provides transparency and disclosure to the public on how our tax dollars are being spent. The purpose of a Sunshine Law request is to promote ethics and prevent corruption. However, in this case, it appears it actually exposed it. In an email district parents obtained with a Sunshine request, the board president tried to cover this up by saying the district had trouble finding parents willing to review the books. Parents, taxpayers, please raise your hand if you would have been willing to sit on the book review committee. Thank you. Now, please raise your hand again if you were asked to be on the book review committee. Hmm. Clearly, finding parents is not an issue. Things that make you go, hmm. I am really looking forward to Tuesday, April 5th, where I can place my two votes for candidates not affiliated with any corrupt teachers union, nor in connection Time's with... Up. I'll be right finished in a moment, nor in connection with school district antics like the election interference between school board candidate John Kalin and Wentzville School District. Thank you. Up next is Jen Olson. My name is Jen Olson. I'll start with the monthly reminder that board policy 0412 and 1431 are intimidating, discriminatory, discriminatory, and violate the citizens' rights to free speech. These policies require revision in order to become lawful under the Missouri and United States constitutions. Once again, I do not see these policy revisions on the agenda for tonight's meeting, and I want to reiterate the importance of these revisions in order to avoid further violations of civil rights of the citizens in this community. Now I would like to address the corruption that is stinking up this room. The MSBA is being sued by the Missouri Attorney General for violating Missouri Sunshine Law. The suit alleges that they're refusing to turn over material information related to parents being labeled as terrorists for caring about their child's education. As well as material relating to MSBA's guidance to schools about CRT, mask mandates, and IEP meeting policies. Now what on earth could all of this secrecy mean? And why would our district choose to utilize and pay such a shady organization to help us select the next superintendent? If it's because we were already locked into our contract with MSBA by the time the suit was filed, then why wouldn't this board at least try to give the appearance of transparency and integrity in this process? You could have reached out to those of us who have been calling and emailing and addressing this board publicly about our disapproval and invited us to the super secret select community member input session this Saturday. How were those community members selected? Did the board president just nominate her friends and those who share her ideology like she did with the challenge book committees? Our board president has experienced much difficulty when it comes to appropriately and fairly handpicking community members for these special committees. Apparently, she can't find anyone willing to sit on these committees either. It's almost like she can't see us sitting out here month after month. The corruption is blatantly obvious to the public and it's on full display. Finally, I want to make the community aware that the Missouri House passed a bill this week that allows for recall of school board members. Please call and email your senators and ask them to support and pass the bill so it can be signed into law. Everyone benefits from accountability, except those who wish not to be held accountable.
Great. Up next is consent agenda. You'll want to make sure to refresh because there are a few items that have been moved to new business. With that, we need a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Motion. President Bates, is that an amended? Yes. Can we yes. tweak that motion, please? Yeah. I second that motion. All right. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Can you get everyone? Okay. Moving on to 11.1, .1, superintendent's report, preliminary budget report. Well, Mr. Angevine is setting up this pre a presentation will be coming back to the board in June for final approval of the budget. This is just a preliminary um, budget report. So he'll be providing some timely updates from March literally through and up to uh, June in order for you to ultimately approve uh, that budget in June. With that, Mr. Angevine. Thank you. What I'm going to do today is give you a state of the district as well as a preliminary budget uh, for next year. Uh, state of the district, 2021 ended with an operating surplus of $1.2 million. 21-22 is also expected to end with an operating surplus, which is absolutely necessary to remain with a 25% fund balance for the district. We are planning to present a balanced 2022-23 operating budget to the board in June. Uh, one thing to remember about the uh, operating budget that we're going to present in June, there are many changes between now and June. Uh, we have a lot of estimates in here on where we expect the budget to be. Uh, right now, it is, it is exactly as close as we can get to being balanced. We, we don't know what some of the expenses are. We've estimated them as they come in. Uh, we'll see exactly whether we will be able to balance, but we are very close. We're in the early stages of the budget planning process. And again, revenue and expenses projections are changing daily and estimates for next year will change as we move through the budget process. Preliminary assessed values indicate a 3.98% increase since certification by the County Board of Equalization last August. Again, the reason I'm going over property taxes and some of the larger items, these are the major variances we're gonna have and the major things that are driving our budget for next year. We do not anticipate a reduction in our tax rate. This is a non-reassessment year and a high consumer price index. That is a combination that will keep the tax rate intact. Current and delinquent taxes are expected to increase $7.8 million over last year's budget, pr primarily because of the increase in assessed values. There is also a presentation later on uh, in, in today's board meeting on, on the taxes, and we'll get more into that when we get to that presentation. The state, as far as formula and classroom trust funds, that is another very large area that drives our budget. State formula... State formula and classroom trust funds usually provide the district with large increases in new funding. The state formula is based on attendance multiplied by a state adequacy target. The problem is we're not, balanced, we're not budgeting attendance to be increased next year. And we're budgeting the SAT at $6,375 uh, with a 100% proration factor that is the same as it was last year. Normally we expect large increases in funding for our formula and classroom trust funds. We are not going to get that next year. And, there, and therefore, uh, one of our largest sources of funding is not increasing. On the next slide, we have Prop C sales tax. This is another large area of revenue for us. Based on a prior year weighted average daily attendance, this is based on a prior year weighted average daily attendance times a per student rate. Uh, although attendance is not expected to increase, we do expect that the rate per student is going to be increased for sales taxes, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $50 per student. As far as financial institution tax, 
tax waivers on district banks have ended. What that means is banks have had a waiver in the past that allowed them not to pay taxes to our district. Those waivers are being eliminated and we will get a windfall from the tax waivers for the district banks. Earnings on investments. The district will not be receiving $1.8 million in bond premiums this year. Uh, of course, that's was next year, of course, because we are not doing general obligation refunding bonds next year. So naturally, we will, be not, we will not be receiving those premiums. We have also drawn down our non-operating fund balances as required by law to fund our district construction projects. What that means is, by law, what money we received in bonds to build our buildings is there. We have to use that to build our buildings and therefore our earnings on the money we have in the bank for those bonds will be decreased next year. As far as other local revenues, uh, since COVID, we have seen a reduction in facility rentals and we're budgeting fewer rentals next year. And as far as county revenues, we're not expecting flu fluctuate any fluctuations in county revenues at this particular time. As far as state high needs funds, a change in the state formula has reduced budgeted revenues in this area. And we will not be receiving the large, we're still receiving a lot of funds, but that is going to be cut maybe 25% in, in this area. As far as federal Medicaid reimbursement, we're expecting additional sources of Medicaid reimbursement next year due to work done in Jerry Labrat's area to bring more revenue in to qualify for this reimbursement. As far as federal and lunch breakfast programs, we do not anticipate enhanced federal funding programs to continue next year for our federal lunch and breakfast programs. As far as ESSER funding, budgeted ESSER II and ESSER III funding is not anticipated to be used in 21-22 as budgeted. Those ESSER fundings are being moved to 2022 and 2023. As far as bond pre proceeds, we received $21.2 million in bond proceeds this year from the issuance of general obligation refunding bonds. And this income will not be received in 2022 as we do, as we do not anticipate any refunding of bonds, especially the way the interest rates are moving at the present time. Uh, as far as the expense side, other than the revenue side, Major anticipated increases in expenses from the highest to the lowest that we're anticipating next year. We're having staffing for North Point Middle School and North Point High School. At North Point High School, we're adding a grade level, and of course, we're, we're going to be staffing North Point Middle School. We've got medical insurance rates going up, out-of-district placements, liability insurance, cybersecurity costs, and the fact that we will be performing a major cybersecurity audit next year to enhance our security in this area additional high needs bus routes, diesel fuel costs, and utilities all increasing next year. As for also on the expense side, food service expenses should be coming down as the supply chain is restored and federal subsidies expire. Building budgets were cut 15% in 2019-20. These budgets were not restored in 2021 and they will not be increased next year. As far as uh, other expenditure information, the district will be budgeting vacancies and purchase order shortfalls, and this will help eliminate deficits which are expected to be recovered and which always get recovered year after year. It's been a long time since we've never done this in the district, and this will stop our fluctuations from budget. Overall, revenues are anticipated to decrease next year by approximately $13 million in the district. Actually, on the operating side, we're going to have an increase of $10 million in revenues when adjusting for the 2021-22 general obligation refunding bonds and premiums. As a matter of fact, that's $10 million overall is going to be increased when we uh, take out the general obligation bonds which we received from the previous year. The majority of revenue increases are from higher assessed values, increased sales taxes, and the use of ESSER funding. We're not budgeting for an increase in state formula funding, which the district normally relies on for fund growth. Also in summary, this is a preliminary information only and serves as a, prog as a progress report on the budget. All major revenue and expense assumptions will be revisited as information becomes available. 
And again, the 2022-23 budget is balanced at this point in time, and we hope, we hope to keep that in balance as we present that budget in June to this board. And at this point in time, I am available to answer any questions from the board. Any questions? President Bates, if I may. Absolutely. Uh, Rick, what, what's the estimate, the latest estimate on the surplus for this year? I know we didn't put an amount, but do you have a rough order of magnitude? Um, we could be anywhere between balanced budget to a five to six million dollar surplus. Okay. Now, when you take that in perspective of a quarter of a billion dollars in, in operating funds and $360 million in overall funds for this district, that's like landing an airplane within an eighth of an inch. Uh, yes, we should be within balanced budget and five to six million is my anticipated range right now. And again, we have to and hopefully target for in the neighborhood of two to two and a half million dollars to keep a 25% fund balance because revenues and expenses are both going up by $10 million next year and our percentage of fund balance is based on our percentage of expenses. Thanks. Follow-up question. Remind me what that, on that financial institution tax change for this year, what's the dollars associated with that you anticipate? Uh, yeah, that expired. Excuse right, me. So. <laughs> the uh, financial institution tax increase is expected to be in the neighbor, oh, that's the Medicaid reimbursement. One moment, please. We're estimating $200,000. This might be something you have to get later. I noticed you put on the, the variable changes by rank order of magnitude for next year, roughly on fuel costs. Do you know what we give per year? I'm not sure the budget overall, but uh, actually, we are estimating a $200,000 increase above our current budget next year for fuel costs. Okay. And uh, that may need to be revisited. Those numbers were put together about three weeks ago. And uh, again, we're budgeting a $200,000 increase. Will that cover it? I don't know. And this is another reason I say that these budgets can fluctuate between now and sure. when we finally put them together for June. Sure. Thanks, Rick. President Bates, if you could, please. Uh, help me out, if you could, Mr. Angevine, on our ESSER funds. Uh, wasn't some of that money uh, basically supposed to be to uh, help districts in achievement lag and achievement loss? Yes, there are various requirements, and we did a survey on that. Uh, those are the ESSER three funds, and uh, so far we have not spent the ESSER three funds. The ESSER three funds are budgeted for next year and the year after. These monies that are in this budget right now uh, are not the ESSER three funds that are related to those particular positions. So my question would be, do we have need for of course, we're getting down to the end of our school years, but uh, here, but did we have need for this school year? Uh, no, we don't. We're anticipating a surplus, and at this particular point, I am planning to move those uh, ESSER funds from this year's budget into next year to balance the budget. If you remember, I uh, presented the board at one point in time that we were expecting a $2.5 million uh, unbalanced budget. That's one of the things that I'm using uh, to help us budget balance the budget for 2023-24, or excuse me, 20, yeah, 22-23. I'm moving the money from this year to next year, and that is how I'm overcoming the 2.5 million, one of the ways, one of the many ways that I'm covering that deficit that I had previously announced. President Bates, if I may, just one more. Um, Dr. Skeeters, I, I think we, we've had some conversations around the ESSER three funds, maybe just to, to tag on to 
uh, Secretary Schaefer's points of view. I think there's been some preliminary work, at least as I understand it, related to those ESSER three funds and some some positions and things that we think are important, just given our evaluation of um, of the district. It, would you share just some of that detail? So regarding positions, we have an uh, intervention coach that we are um, going to be providing uh, the district with uh, using those funds. And additionally, we are currently researching additional interventions um, and we'll be using that, those funds to fund those as well. And the intervention coach is um, instrumental in doing that work. Great, thanks. Any other questions? Okay, we will move on to old business. And I think this is an adjustment. Um, we need a motion to approve the correction of a clerical error in the previously approved minutes for the meeting January 20th, 2022, by correcting the spelling of a board member's name and the recording of a vote as presented. Motion. Second. All right, motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Next up, new business. Don't forget to refresh. So 13.1, fresh service order form. I believe this was pulled from consent. Director Garber, did you pull this one? 13.1, fresh service order form. I basically like to have a di an open discussion about this in particular. Um, better explanation of this program Fresh Service is a uh, work order system that we would use in the technology department for teachers and staff members to put in work orders when there's a uh, technology issue um, or they need a repair on their um, laptops or um, need an uh, issue resolved regarding technology. Um, our current work order system is uh, no longer being supported, um, so we have over the past um, four or five months been researching various um, work order systems and this is the system that um, we would like to move forward with for supporting um, our teachers and staff that they need when uh, there's a technology need that we can help them with. I believe I saw that on this that there was an effective date of, was this the one from August of 21? I believe that the date on here, um, the subscription would start um, if approved throughout the participating army, it would start March 17th of this school, and it would go through uh, March 15th of the following year, so a year and a half. So I was reading on, it was, um, it said page one of 16. And could you give me the definition of why, I mean, the reason why the effective date, August the 17th of 21, was on there? I think that's their terms of service, is effective as of that date. I'm sorry, which page was that? Uh, this was the... Yeah, it's on page one of 16. Am I looking uh, yes, at the right this one? is their terms of service. Um, the terms of service were last um, revised on August 17th. Okay. All right. But so this is so that, um, I'm sorry, the purpose of this particular program is to, for ordering? To pr provide work orders. So we have a current system uh, that we utilize as teachers and staff members. Um, if there's an issue with their computer, they can receive a work order. Um, that work order goes into our queue for our technicians we're able to resolve those technology issues for them. So um, our current uh, system that we're utilizing is no longer being supported. 
sort of um, the way that we sort of move this thing through is through Thread. But so this is actually like the read on read for that to provide um, that option as well as the capability to sort of like move that through the system. And in this newer system, you've put this out for bid already? Uh, we, we did multi quote um, for a new system. And that will be presented to the board? And that will be presented to the board when? Uh, based on the price, um, we just needed to ensure we had multiple bids. Um, this would not call for, say, um, an RFP um, to be sent out. It would not? It, it would not. Okay. And the reason it would not would be because, uh, say that? The cost for an RFP would be uh, items over $15,000 um, in the county. Okay. That would be less, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we need a motion to approve that item, Director Garber. We need a motion to approve that item. Second. Any other discussion? All right, so we have a motion to approve the fresh service as presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.2, Font Center for Excellence, MOU. Director Garber, I believe you pulled this one as well. All right, my, my question would be on this. I'm sorry, I'm going. Um, I noticed in when I was reading the contract that there is an address that's not our main office on this one. It gives a address of a school location. There's no location on there. I'm sorry, I don't see it either. I must have mistaken that one. All right. I'm sorry, I must have mistaken that one. I'm sorry. Be another one. All right, so then we would need a motion to approve Font Center for Excellence Training Program MOU as presented. Motion. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. And then last, I believe, Director Garber, the E-rate application, was that yours as well? If I'm not mistaken, then this is a reference to what we addressed a little over a year ago about the ability for the upgrade in the computer issues and such. And I was just wondering if you might have a report uh, available on this that we could see what was spent last year on all of this, what the results were before we were, we were looking for others. And also to, um, do we have any other bids on this? Um, because I, I saw only the one reference, but do you have any other bids or? So uh, I believe this is being referenced to the internet access yes. as part of E-rate, um, which is um, a program that provides to colleges, universities, and library systems a discount on network connectivity, which includes equipment, which also includes internet access, which is connection um, from building to building. Um, and it provides a, our district about a 40 to 50% discount each year. Um, 
as part of that process, um, we do have to bid out uh, the services. Um, so there are two pieces uh, to this. We bid out internet service um, uh, renewal, which is through uh, what is only one response, which is through charter especially. Um, and then we also have a state consortium uh, called MoreNet. Um, MoreNet um, used to provide internet access for our district uh, about five years ago and have been our uh, provider prior to that for many years. Um, and we exceeded the bandwidth that we needed uh -huh. as a district. Um, so we had to go out and bid five years ago to provide that. MoreNet is now able to provide the internet connection speeds that we need. Um, and um, as our state uh, consortium, um, they're able to provide a lot of uh, the needs um, that we would have to pay extra for with charter or spectrum. Um, so our transition back to MoreNet would actually provide a lot of benefits to our district uh, and less of a cost um, because of what they're able to provide. I think you wrote in here that there would be somewhere between, between 40 and 70,000. Is that what you expected? And that was on a year basis? On a yearly basis. On a yearly basis. By making the transition back to MoreNet. So the, the issue was that last year that we had to have all of these things done and we actually spent an additional amount of money because we did do only a one-year contract with that. So have all of those been implemented, all of those so all the Fixes. services that we uh, that were approved last year um, were implemented, and then um, with this transition back, if approved, um, starting January or July one, um, we will be able to discontinue those services for charter spectrum and uh, solar unit and other uh, spectrum. So, do we have any information relative to the effectiveness of the fixes from last year? Um, that is. So you're asking us to go and, and do a lesser amount with Spectrum and then also accommodate then with the other, with the other company? It, it will only be the other company. We will not uh, be utilizing uh, Spectrum anymore with the agreement and um, with what our state consortium, MoreNet, is able to provide. We're able to provide internet access services, um, our internet connection. We're also able to provide the services that we need. So they able they're able to encompass all of those uh, services into one one of their uh, services. But we used them before. Is that what? That is absolutely that's right. Yeah. So, but then we had to change that because of the fact that they could no longer accommodate our bandwidth. Correct. Correct. And so, do we know how efficient that their new system is? And yes, and they are. How, able how do to we, how do we know that? Uh, we spoke with. In, um, I spoke with their. So is there any evidence of that? Any physical evidence of that by users and such like that? I mean, do we have any referral from anyone that's actually using it? Oh, yeah, all of um, the uh, county school district, uh, which I can see uh, back there, um, is a farm. Um, there's also many different um, county school districts that utilize internet um, and utilize their internet services along with many of the um, universities across the state of Missouri. And how is it that we would have a significant savings like that? I mean, uh, you would think that we might be missing something. Um, I would say the savings um, are on there after kind of doing the calculation of what MoreNet is able to, or sorry, uh, Charter Spectrum, plus the services that we are providing. That's where we are able to provide that um, Spectrum discount between the four and the 70,000 so I remember that we voted on that very early um, in the year, and I know that those were not implemented for a um, couple of months, even after that was approved. Um, so how much do we have a period of time at this time 
that we have a poor transition right now? So if, if approved, we'll um, send Mr. Green an officer knowing that immediately, and they'll begin working on um, the transition with our accessory um, transition area of the back lot. Um, so that uh, gives us another couple months to get this area back in order and um, to build it up. And we will have we will have greater privacy um, issues. I mean, we won't. I mean, to eliminate the pri some there, of the privacy there, issues. They're an internet service provider, so they're providing internet service to our to our customers. Uh, so that's where we're at with that. So, is there any is there any evidence that that you could even present to us about the efficiency and how that's going to work for us? Because I know that that was a a big a big thing back in a year, a little over a year ago in January when we when we met to do this. Absolutely, and th these are the services that they provide. Um, they're able to provide these services as a value add um, for um, you know, the school district and the university. So the, the services that we were um, previously paying for, they're able to offer as a value add with no additional cost um, to the school district. So you would you would stayed in t contact with them for the last couple of years, because of the reason that of what? Uh, because that their sole purpose is working with the school district, university, and uh, library system. So they have a very good understanding of me um, and uh, our, our district, and they're able to support us. And we and we continue to be a member of Mornet. Um, we just may not be utilizing those Mornet services um, due to the limitations that they have. But now they're able to meet uh, the requirements that we meet as a district and they're able to do that. And can you tell us how they have expanded that bandwidth? Uh, they have contracted with additional companies um, to ensure that they're able to provide that service to us. So do you know who those other companies are? service provider that was helping us provide what they called a, a, a fiber connection to the district was previously Spectrum, um, and their limitation was one gig. Um, we needed more than that. Um, now the company um, is called Bluebird, um, and they're the ones providing um, the additional government services that we need to have connected to the district. So um, that, that's the fiber connection that they're able to provide. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right, we'll need a motion to approve the E-rate contract as presented. Motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.4, preliminary tax rate. Do we need a motion to approve the pre preliminary tax rate as presented? Uh, we can motion. There is a, uh, a presentation. I'll be glad to just take the motion and move forward. Okay. So we got a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. You can do your presentation. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I apologize for these presentations as, as uh, PowerPoint and Google Slides don't work well in the sandbox together. So I had everything lined up perfectly, but that's irrelevant. As we move through this, I'd like to explain uh, to the board what this is. A preliminary tax rate is due to the County of St. Charles on the 8th of April each year. The county uses this information to send preliminary tax notices to each property owner in the district. This tax rate is non-binding and the district may change it when we receive our actual assessed values in September. This preliminary rate must be approved by this board and sent to the county by the 8th of April. Tax computations are based on, a, uh, as far as the computations, tax rate computations are based on assessed values, tax rate, and the consumer price index. If the assessed values increase more than the consumer price index, then the rates would need to be adjusted down per the Hancock Amendment. 
We are not predicting any changes in the rates for this year, mainly because it's a combination of not being a reassessment year and the consumer price index is predicted to be very high. Therefore, the rates are not expected to change and I am not budgeting the rates to change and I would like to send the same rates we had last year to the county. On the next slide, the other factor that uh, will depend upon how much money we receive uh, for our assessed property is preliminary assessed values are indicating a 3.98% increase since certification by the Board of Equalization last August. And the assessed value has increased 5.6% since last March. This is even without a reassessment. And a lot of this is based on new property. On the next slide, we have annual tax collections. Again, are computed by multiplying the tax rates by the assessed values. As I just stated, the tax rates will not be changing due to, due to high consumer price index and, not, and no reassessment year. But assessed values have increased. Therefore, what you saw in the budget is that current and delinquent taxes are predicted to increase $7.8 million over last year's budget. These rates, as they are on this screen, is what I would like to submit to the County of St. Charles. These rates, as you saw on your packet, are split out into these sections. I am not, as you can see, we have the 2021 current rate and the 2022 proposed rate. No changes in any changes in these rates. And on to the next slide, we recommend that the board make a motion, we need a motion on this, to submit to the St. Charles County Clerk a preliminary non-binding tax rate of $5.4.16 as presented. So we have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions for Mr. Angevine? Yeah, President Bates, if I may. Mm -hmm. Rick, remind me, the 2020 rate was higher. What was that decline from 20 to 21? It was in the neighborhood of 20, cents. 20 to 25 cents. I believe 23 cents was the reduction in the tax rate during the reassessment year last year. Thanks. Is that all? Director Goodson, is that all? Yep. Anyone else? All right. So we have a motion to approve the preliminary tax rate as presented. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.5, Boone Trail Classroom Finishes. We need a motion to approve the Boone Trail Classroom Finishes as presented. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? President Bates. Yes. Um, I don't have any questions. I just wanted to make a quick comment. I wanted to thank the administration for bringing this forward to the board. Um, I had an opportunity to uh, tour this building, so to advise President Bryce, who isn't here tonight. But these improvements will be great for the school and the staff and the students. And just to look ahead, Heritage, um, or Secretary Schaefer and I, we also looked at those um, issues that heritage is happening. It's good to see improvements at the legacy building, so thank you. Absolutely. Any other discussion? Yeah, President Bates. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked a little bit last time around the process for which we assess what needs to be maintained, you know, the priority of those projects, the spend. Um, I echo certainly uh, Director Stoley's points about these two buildings in particular. And, and what I, what I would like to request maybe for next meeting is just a walkthrough of the process for which you go to collect that information to understand what the totality of potential work is and then how you then design, you know, call it your forward year budget on maintenance. And, and, the, and the reason for the ask is really to understand from a, an equitable perspective how we think about some of these older buildings and how, how we maintain those, if they, you know, maybe even where the total dollars go by building, maybe over you know, a prior year period and kind of looking backwards to understand that. Just just wanted to get a, a fuller uh, perspective of the process, the dollars we've spent, how we go about that. Because you know, I can imagine we're gonna get other you know type approvals and I'd like to really understand that process.
Any other discussion? All right, if there's another discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. 13.6, Frontier Middle School Change Order 7. We need a motion to approve the Frontier Middle School Change Order 7 as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? How close are we on this one to being done? <coughs> Frontier. How close? Yeah, to completion. Sorry, John. We are very close. Yeah. Uh, painting finishes are in. Okay. It, is, it is close. Thanks. All right. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, nay. Nay, please. Okay. Motion carries. 13.7, Heritage Elementary Building Envelope Design Services. We would need a motion to approve the Heritage Elementary Building Envelope Design Services as presented. Motion. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.8, Dwell Elementary Stormwater Construction Easement Vacation. We would need a motion to approve the Dwell Elementary Stormwater Construction Easement Vacation as presented. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? Hmm. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.9, Administrative Center Temporary Construction Easement. We need a motion to approve this Administrative Center Temporary Construction Easement as presented. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.10, Timberland High School Fax Classroom Change Order 4. We would need a motion to approve the Timberland High School Fax Change Order, change order 4 as presented. Motion. Motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.11, Timberland High School roofing bids. Need a motion to approve the, approve the Timberland High School roofing bids as presented. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on this item? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries. 13.12, Frontier Middle School Temporary Construction Easement Vacation. We need a motion to approve the Frontier Middle School Temporary Construction Easement Vacation as presented. Motion. Second. Motion and a second. Any other discussion? Good, President Bates. I just mm -hmm. want to say thank you to Mr. Blanton. I did have some concerns on these easements by vacating them that it wouldn't restrict our water flow in any way, and I appreciate your thoughts on that. Thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. All right. With that, we would need a motion to adjourn to go back into closed session. I will say we'll take a 10-minute break between now and then, but we'll need to adjourn open to go into closed. Do you have a motion? Can you state the reason there, Betsy, on that? President Bates. What was that? Can you state the reason on the closed session, on the motion? Uh, negotiations. Thank you. Motion. Second. All, right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 aye.